Hello, I'm Reza Rad from Red Acad. In this video, I'm going to talk about uh, what is the importance of knowing your Power BI users, a mistake that a lot of organizations do and mix up their users. What is the importance of that, how to find it, and what to do with that? It's a really important thing for governance of a Power BI implementation and adoption. Let's go and see how it works. Power BI um, users are not all the same. Like a mistake a lot of uh, organizations have is that they th they think all the users are the same and they treat them different. Uh, they tr they treat them all the same. However, there are different kind of users. For example, this might be uh, a kind of layers that you might have different type of users. Some users are end users. They basically just use the content you provided for them. A report. They interact with it, but that would be basically like mm, drill down or drill up, right click on something, filtering something, using the slicer, highlighting something. It would be basically like end user consumption of the report. They will not change the report. Then you might have some users who are report visualizers. These are users who actually build reports, but the existing report is not enough for them. They want to have better visualization. They want to have a different visualizations. Um, these users, however, will not change the existing report uh, and they will not do any modeling, bringing their own data and things like that. Then you might have some users like self-service champions. These are users who build visualizations, but they also like to get data from, let's say, an Excel file they have in some place. Um, some budget information from another application, combine them all together, do some modeling, calculations, and the visualizations. And then you have like the central core developers who are actually building the reports and models that everyone else is using, end users, and also main source for self-service champions and report visualizers. This is like one, uh, let's say, assembly of layers in uh, in an organization, every organization might be different. When you have the Power BI users, then you can control their access based on what uh, what they uh, they will have access to. You don't want to give, for example, end user the full edit rights because that end user might go and edit something uh, all of a sudden or delete something. Uh, these are, for example, ways that you can control this access. If it is an end user, you can uh, create a Power BI app, which is like a read-only access to that content and share it through there. Or they might have access to this through a, through an embedded web application, but still with a read-only option. Then you have your report visualizers. For these, you have different approaches, but they would all have read-only access to the data set. They will not change the existing report. They can create their own report, which still can be done with Power BI apps, with the ability to create their own reports. It can be done with the view access on the workspace and some other methods. Your self-service champions, they also have read-only access to the data set, but the difference is that they can import data from other places, uh, which can be a combination of like importing data from existing model and importing from other places, or uh, the feature that is coming like later, ability to have uh, like multiple live connection at the same time. But they would be able to change the model, not the existing model, but build their own model and their own report. And your central model developer is the only group who should have edit rights, full edit rights on the data set because they are building something that everyone else is using it. Uh, you also need to have like different kind of training for these users. For example, for end user, there is no point spending, let's say, for having five days Power BI training, teaching them about how to do a specific transformation in Power Query or M. There won't be a point. This end user basically won't use any of those. End user training is like normally a couple of hours training, just explaining how to navigate through the app, how to find the report you want, how to use drill down, drill up, and, and things like that. Uh, report visualizers, these are users who would need to understand some basics of Power BI, some essentials about Power BI. They would, however, need a lot of uh, 
uh, deep dive information about how to do visualization, uh, but not the modeling, just the visualization, different kind of visualization, best practices to use it and tips and tricks around it. Normally in Radicat we have like a two days training for this type of group of people. Self-service champions, they need more training than report visualizers. So they basically need everything that the report visualizers need, plus modeling training, DAX, and also the Power Query training, because these are uh, a group that are going to deal with the data model. So they need some training on that, which normally we have like training options about a week for this group. Central model developers, this is a group that you need the deepest dive training option for them. This can be sometimes several weeks, which is best to split into multiple sessions. You don't want to like overload the information, uh, like gradually give them this information would be best. They need deep dive information on Power Query, doing transformation, building star schema, sometimes M scripting, DAX advanced training and, and things like that. Uh, which we do have like different training options for each of these in Radicat website, but you can provide these training for any, from any other channels. The main point is that different type of users, you need to have different training options. Now, uh, you might say, well, in my organization, the layers are not these four layers that you mentioned, Reza. For me, it's like different, which is correct. Every organization has a different type of layers. In the small businesses, like a group of let's say 10 people, 15 people, you might have only like one or two report developers, often even only one, and uh, a lot of end users, right? So it is basically just two layers. In larger organizations, uh, like the end user is not uh, visible in this diagram right now, but in addition to visualizers and self-service champions, your central developer layer might be also split in multiple layers itself. Like you have central, uh, report developers, then central model developers, which build model that the report developer use, and data transformation developers, which might be someone using Dataflow or any other data transformation technology to build something that the data modeler use it. So you can have layers within layers. Finding out the exact structure of layers within your organization is highly dependent on the organization culture you have. You might have three layers, 10 layers, two layers, uh, but it's never one layer, that, that is for sure. It is your job to find the requirement, to find out uh, what is the structure layer. Now, once you find that layer structure, it doesn't mean that people cannot move between these, like someone who is report visualizer would be report visualizer forever. That's not the case because their job function changes, their interest changes. Now they are interested in building reports more, uh, more uh, in analytical level. They want to bring some data sets to build something with it or their boss changed their function and said, well, you need to do this from now on. You need to be ready uh, with some options like training, upskilling programs for these users to be able to move to the, to the upstream layers. Otherwise, they would start doing it in a way that is not the proper way and then you'll have some challenges. Well, uh, these are layers, but why it is important to understand the layers, why it is important to understand different user groups. It's a really important governance aspect of uh, Power BI adoption that you know your users. These are some of the reasons. I'm not going to explain that because that would be a really long video. I'm just uh, mentioning them here. In another video, I'll explain that. Uh, first is that if you treat everyone the same, like if you don't think about layers, you say, well, we want to use Power BI, so let's have like two weeks of Power BI training for everyone in the organization. That's, that's a lot of uh, uh, budget you have to spend for that. Uh, you gradually get the users in downstream layer losing their interest, like end users or report visualizers when you are talking about advanced M transformations. Your upstream users will uh, probably like get bored by the time you want to provide all of these information and they go and find their own way of doing things which might not be the right way of doing it. Uh, this mix up will uh, will be worst for the governance because then things are not done in a way that you should be doing it or everyone should be doing it gradually 
in your organization, people will lose their trust on Power BI, which is really bad. And that might uh, cause the whole Power BI adoption in your organization to fail, which is the last thing you want. So it is really important to know your users and deal with them respectively. Uh, in another video, I'll talk about uh, some other aspects of this and more details on that. If you like this video, go ahead and subscribe into our YouTube channel. We have weekly videos of Power BI. Thanks.